Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. And by using the daily charts, you can see, okay, what's the potential high for the month? What's the high for the week? What's the high for the day? And then, therefore, you could set up just like this. If we're looking for the market to decline from April into May, then on rallies, and if we get near this predicted resistance, I'll look for sell signals. And so as you get sell signals in the marketplace, you can then just follow the market along. Now, all of a sudden, we're starting to see with the pound, which is really interesting to me from a trader's perspective, I'm seeing a pattern of a higher low and higher high. But until we get back over 150, and that's this month's pivot resistance, personally, I'm not going to get into this market. I think right now the market is stuck between what I call a rock and a hard place. The market has had a nice little return off of this hammer pattern. The market's rallied up, and we have significant monthly resistance at 150. I think that we are still in a weekly buy mode. As long as we hold above, as you can see, this purple line, 146.58, that's the monthly pivot point. That's the rock, and the hard place is 150.81. So... Buy signals are going to be, if we generate intraday buy signals, and now here's what you can do, folks. Watch this. We're going to edit this. We're going to change from month, and I'm going to use. I can look at on an intraday basis. That's to say. We have a monthly pivot near 146. Today we had a daily pivot support at 146. We have a, what's called a confluence of support at 146. So the pivot points have identified a month ahead, a day ahead, near this 146 and a half that there's strong support, and there's overhead resistance at 150 and change based on the monthly targets. For an options trader, I can now kind of target that between 46 and 50. That's where the pound might hang out for at least the next week, week and a half till the month concludes. So as an options trader, I'm looking at potentially looking for trade opportunities between those two zones, and it's up to the strategies that I want to employ to utilize when we get there. Looking at... I think it was interesting, as Stephen asked and talked about the Australian dollar, the Australian dollar has really been in a, in a pretty wild movement. And the pivot points, as you can see, and then we have an hourly chart with the daily pivots, have really been respecting a lot of times, more times than not, targeting not only what the condition of the market is, but what the range of the market is, predicting the highs, predicting the turnaround lows. If we turn this around and look at the euro currency looking at the euro we've seen that the market actually it it doesn't it almost looks as if these pivots are doing what following the market afterwards what's amazing is these pivots are predicted the day before when you use daily pivots it's based off today's price action and it's going to tell you what tomorrow's potential range might be so therefore you're better able to set up a trading plan if the market comes back near support and you're still in a longer term or an intermediate term buy mode then perhaps you want to be looking at what Taking a buy signal, look for a candle pattern like a hammer. Look for a high closed doji. Look for a change in momentum for the trigger to go with that flow. And so there's, there's how we could utilize. What's interesting is that, you know, here from approximately looking at a daily chart, I mean, it does, let's go even to a weekly chart. 
from a weekly chart looking at the year, I mean, the thing looks almost straight down. I mean, we had it generated a sell signal way over here. And by the way, as you may notice, this is one of those little low closed doji patterns that we have. But you may notice that this orange arrow pointing down is a sell signal, and it's been in place since December. The market looks like it's been just straight down. But you and I know that it hasn't been straight down. We've seen gyrations. On or about the first week of January, market went up a little bit further. That's when you want to be looking to be a seller. You see rallies in March. We did get it. Then the market comes down, and then by on or about, as you can see here, we see market rallies, and we've got that rally. We've got that seasonal rally. Now we're probably looking for the market to peak out, come back down. This is kind of interesting. Let's go to edit studies. Let's take a look at our monthly numbers. We didn't quite make our monthly support. There's a gap on the charts down here. By the way, today, folks, today generated a daily sell signal based on our, our system. So since the monthly support is way down here, I don't know if that's plausible, but we do see the market that moves lower, and then we're going to see possibly rallies by late July. What I would be looking at is for further weakness of this market Somewhere down here in the next two weeks, I'd be looking for a buy near, I don't think 114.85 is, I mean, I think we can all round that up. Between 15 and 16, 115, 116, I'll be looking for buy signals. I think from now until then, we're stuck between this pivot monthly target, 125, which is the purple line, down to 115. It's a wide spread, but I think that's the trading opportunity that we will have going into July. So using candles and pivots, we have several different things that we can utilize. Obviously, yesterday, notice that we have this engulfing candle pattern, which really set the stage for follow negative follow-through today. We have a gap on the charts lower. I don't know if we're really looking for um, a big risk uh, to the upside I think the risk is to the downside. In other words, if you're long here, I think there's bigger risk to the downside by being long than there is by being short, especially with this 125 pivot, monthly pivot, overhanging the marketplace. So that's how I read the markets, looking at the pound, looking at the Australian dollar, and looking at the euro currency, combining pivots with candles, as well as looking at one of the most important aspects, the seasonal tendency of the marketplace. So that pretty much concludes the time that we have today. I wanted to give a lot of thanks to um, our host, Steve. I don't know where Steve, if I can get this back. Hold on a minute. You don't see it, John? <clears throat> Uh, which one is it here, Steve? Um, I see it on my screen. Wait, let's see. This should have taken you back. Is that, did it take you back? I believe so. All right. Why don't we uh, see if we have time for a question? Do you have time for a question or two, John? I do have time. I wanted to make sure that we did give time for a question. So my flight doesn't leave till noon tomorrow, so we have a couple <laughs> more minutes. <laughs> Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.